here we are on the Kona coast of the big island of Hawaii, up at 2,200 feet or about 700 meters above sea level in a native Hawaiian forest with other plants here that people have brought in from the early Hawaiian settlers to the colonizers in the uh, 1800s and collections of medicinal and shamanic plants that I participated in bringing here in the 1980s. My personal history here on this land is, is that I have arrived here in 1975, first exploring, and then uh, my former husband, um, Terence McKenna, and I came back looking for uh, land to carry out a dream on, a botanical dream, um, back in the late 70s. And um, with some other people in this in, in this region, we bought a, an area that was mostly forested and the lower parts had been inhabited with small farms. And through different um, explorations and colleagues, indigenous and biologists as well, we collected a number of species in different parts of the world that we brought here and planted along the trails as teaching examples, as a repository of the genetics of these powerful and culturally significant plants from the uh, Peruvian Amazon, from uh, Central America, a couple from Thailand, a couple from Africa. And so in those early days when we started doing that, I really dreamt of it as kind of a Pangea, a global piece of earth that represented different categories of the ethnobotanical relationship of people to nature. This is one of the most interesting new psychedelics in the world. This is Salvia divinorum and uh, it is definitely one of the plants which will shape the next few decades of the new millennium. This is a coleus. It's ironic that these plants, which have been in our kitchens and in our windowsill flower beds for generations, turn out to contain psychoactive compounds as powerful as any known to science. These are not particularly interesting in terms of drugs, but they're certainly bizarre. I'm up here with me. This is one of the most interesting plants in the garden. This is Cicotria viridis. This is the plant which causes the vision. When taken with ayahuasca, when taken as a liquid, the experience lasts about four to six hours. It's not as intense as smoking it. Smoking it is the most intense experience this side of the yawning grave. You know, at the time, back in the 80s, the Amazon was you were hearing all these stories of it being burned for pasture, for cattle, for lumber, to be exported all over the world, all of these things that were disrupting habitat and indigenous people and their knowledge systems and their languages. All of those aspects of biocultural diversity were really under siege. And so the idea to bring some of those plants that were very important to their way of knowing to their medicine and to their worldview here where they could be protected and thrive in case they needed to be shared again for an impacted environment. That was part of my original vision in creating botanical dimensions. And um, so it's a nonprofit that has existed since 1985 and uh, is my partner in uh, taking care of this land.